Think you can't build a great upper body without a monster bench press and some heavy ass dumbbells? Resistance training with weights is absolutely a staple in functional bodybuilding, but don't sleep on the power of body weight exercises, especially when you really pay attention to movement quality and form. Today, I present an upper body workout that uses only body weight exercises. You can get a great workout from doing the standard chin up, push up and dip. But my hope is today, I can give you a few new variations on these, plus a couple additional movements that will help round out the full upper body session. We'll cover chest, back, arms, shoulders, and utilize four common and highly effective training methods for hypertrophy. So here we go. My favorite seven body weight movements for a complete upper body bodybuilding pump. We're gonna start with lats, shoulders, triceps, and chest. That's right, the whole upper body. This first superset is happening on the every 90 second counter. We've got two movements back to back, a pull up and a dip. You're gonna perform them every alternating 90 seconds for four rounds of each exercise. The first is gonna be an omni grip pull up. That means we're gonna do a narrow, supinated, pronated, and wide grip variation on each set. You're gonna aim for five to 10 reps on each round of pull ups and you're gonna hold a cadence of two seconds down with a pause at the bottom and then up fast. The second movement is going to be a strict dip. Perform this on a bar or a set of rings if you're more advanced, but I do prefer a bar. It is more stable and will allow you to overload as you go. Now, the tempo is gonna be the same, two, one, X, zero. That's two seconds controlled down, a pause at the bottom and up fast. And again, you're aiming for the five to 10 rep range. Now these ranges of reps are pretty aggressive. So use bands as needed to maintain these rep ranges. Now let's face it, when we're doing body weight training, there aren't endless varieties of exercises that you can do. So a way to get more variety within a minimalist approach to training, like if we're just doing pull-ups, is looking at changing your grip. That's why I like doing omni grip pull-ups. If I'm trying to cover a lot of my bases in my upper back and my arms, lats, everything all at once, going wide with your grip, going narrow with your grip, going supinated, pronated, changing the direction in which you place your hands on a pull-up is going to generally hit most of the same muscles. Your biceps, your rear delts, your lats, upper back muscles are gonna work, but depending on how you position your hands, the width, the orientation, you'll bias a little bit more of one thing versus another. And in this particular workout, we're doing four sets of pull-ups, so try four different grips. If you've got options like some of these handles that rotate, you can use those as well. But even if you've just got a straight pull up bar, you can just change the width and the orientation that should help you a lot. Now here's a note on range of motion. On both exercises, I want you to adopt a range of motion that maximizes your joint and muscle range for each movement. So with the pull up, that can mean getting your chest all the way up to the bar, if you can pull that high. And with a dip, it can mean letting your shoulder travel much lower than your elbow. Don't force painful ranges of motion and use bands wisely here to get a little more range without pain on the dip. Now we're moving on. Now it's chest and rear delts. This superset is gonna be the next two exercises, the first of which is a deficit push-up, and the second is a Bulgarian ring row. For this, we're gonna perform rest pause sets. What that means is that you're gonna take the first exercise, the deficit push-up, to failure, then rest approximately 30 seconds or 10 breaths and go immediately back in to another max set to failure of deficit push-ups. Once you've completed that rest pause set of deficit push-ups, you're going to get about a 60 to 90 second break before doing the same thing on the Bulgarian ring row. After your first set of Bulgarian ring rows, where you perform the rest pause set to failure, you're gonna go back and repeat each exercise a second time. Why I like the Bulgarian ring row, most people think of a ring row when they pull the ring right to their side, elbows close. A Bulgarian ring row is sort of orienting your elbow out wide like this and pulling kind of more towards your throat, even towards your face some. When you just change the orientation of your elbow, how it is you know, in relationship to your side, you're gonna to start to target different muscles, particularly in the Bulgarian ring row, we're getting a lot of rear delt activation, which is great, because we already did pull-ups for our lats. Now we're trying to get this full upper body workout with only seven of my favorite body weight exercises. So by changing elbow orientation, you can get there. Now, a quick note about rest pause sets. This is a great way to get some intensity 
in a fewer number of total sets when you're performing an exercise. The way you perform this is you take an exercise like the Bulgarian ring row, you take it all the way to failure. Now because you're in control of the intensity or rather the load by just changing your foot position on the Bulgarian row, what I want you to do is I want you to find an angle to your body where you're gonna fail somewhere in the 10 to 20 rep range. So you see me doing these reps, the angle of my body on my first set, I think I got 15 or 16 Bulgarian ring rows before I could not hit full range of motion. Then you're gonna take about a 10 breath rest. That usually equates to about 30 seconds. So I'm taking my breaths, I'm recovering, and then I go right back to the Bulgarian row for another AMRAP and I max out until I hit failure. That's a single rest pause set. So failure, rest 30 seconds or 10 breaths, failure, that's it. I went 16 right into about eight reps. So 24 total reps taking me to that failure point. That's one set. And I did two of each on the deficit push-up in the Bulgarian ring row. Now a note about position and range. We're using a deficit on the push-up to get more pronounced stretch in the chest. This range of motion is more challenging. So if you find yourself struggling to get more than eight reps on your opening set, then I would suggest using a band in the deficit push-up to assist with this exercise. Rather than taking the deficit push-up and regressing to a regular push-up, I would like you to keep the extra range of motion where you're stretching the chest more at the bottom of the push-up, but just use some assistance in the form of a band. Moving on to the next superset for biceps and triceps. We're gonna leverage isometric stretches at the end of each exercise to put the target muscle group under isometric tension and length. For the first movement, you're gonna perform a ring bicep curl. We're gonna aim for 10 to 15 reps. Once you hit your 10 to 15 reps, immediately you're going to turn over, grab the rings, and pull yourself into a shoulder extension bicep isometric. Hold that for 20 seconds, and then that first set is complete. You're then gonna rest a minute, and you're gonna do the same combination, now with an inverted skull crusher for triceps for 10 to 15 reps, followed by the kneeling prayer stretch for a tricep isometric stretch. Hold that for 20 seconds, and then your inverted skull crusher tricep combination is complete. That's one set of each. You're gonna repeat that for three total sets. Now, one more note about these isometrics. Using an isometric stretch or contraction at the end of a working set is a great way to safely overload a muscle once you've reached or come close to reaching failure. That is why I love pairing a bicep or a tricep curl slash extension with something like an isometric stretch, be it in the shoulder extension bicep isometric or the prayer stretch that I'm showing now. Okay, on to the seventh and final exercise of the day. This one is all about the shoulders and the triceps. I'm calling this the density finisher. You're gonna perform unbroken sets of extended range pike push-ups. The extended range pike push-up can be performed just like I'm showing here, where the hands are on a bench and you send your head past the edge of the bench so that the bench touches your shoulders. When you press back up to the top, adopt a piked position, and that is exactly how you perform this exercise. The further you raise your feet up on a box or another bench or a plate, the harder this exercise becomes. Now the last density finisher is a single exercise and we're gonna be using something called unbroken sets to do a pyramid scheme of repetitions. An unbroken set is when you begin a set and you complete all the repetitions in that given set without stopping. The reps go two, four, six, all the way up to 10, and then back down to two. So the two, no problem. Take a quick rest, do four, no problem. Take a quick rest, do six. Hmm, my shoulders are starting to talk to me. I might wanna rest a little bit longer because this set of eight is gonna feel a little spicy, and so forth and so forth. So this is gonna challenge you to understand how much rest and recovery time you need to push yourself into a bigger set on the next set. I love unbroken sets and unbroken set challenges like this. They kind of allow athletes and trainees to push themselves closer to failure. Also start to understand how much rest you actually need. You're gonna try and accomplish this amount of work as quickly as possible without performing any broken sets. If you, if you start a set and you don't finish the full repetitions, before you fail, then you must rest, 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 and come back and start that set again until you can complete it 
unbroken. This technique forces you to push your sets under fatigue, and it's a useful way to get trainees to approach failure multiple times within a single finisher. It's best done with relatively safe exercises where failure doesn't present much risk. Compare the pike push-up to a back squat and the risk of doing unbroken sets and ladders like this with a back squat becomes much greater. I hope these movements reignite your appreciation for the power of bodyweight training. And remember, you're never too advanced to refine the basics. And if you've stayed with me this long in the video and you're interested, I really encourage you to go check out this video that I'm linking below on moves to get you stronger push-ups and pull-ups. This video will also help you dig into your technique even more on both of these exercises. Thanks for joining me today. See you next time.